it's amazing what we have in terms of EGFR inhibition. Um, I'm old enough to remember uh, the first generation drugs, uh, Cufitinib and Erlotinib. In fact, when I was uh, a young attending in Indiana, I actually ran the first phase one trials uh, with others of those, those drugs. And in those days, we had you know, good inhibitors, but they were not EGFR mutation selective. So they targeted the EGFR receptor in normal cells too. So a great deal of toxicity with rash and, uh, and on the skin and diarrhea. And uh, I recall when we used to do the randomized trials, we could tell who was on the control versus the, the treatment arm because who, who had a rash or not. Um, of course, with time, we learned about EGFR mutations from 2004, that was 1997. And then drugs were developed that were mutation specific, such as osimertinib. So it only targets the, um, the mutation uh, 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 specific EGFR receptor. It still has some, um, some leaking uh, to, to, to the normal receptor. That's why there's some toxicity, but so much more well tolerated. Also, it, it targets T790M. T790M is the most frequent uh, uh, cause of resistance for patients that have um, EGFR mutations and are treated with the first uh, generation drugs. So that, that, that's a big bonus. And then it also, as an added uh, bonus, has great CNS, central nervous system penetration, and has great activity on brain mass. So why is that important? Because this drug, as opposed to other drugs that have been studied in the action setting, is better tolerated, more effective because of the T790M, the brain mets, and better tolerated so that it can be given for longer periods of time. And three years was felt to be uh, a longer and, and better period to have uh, a more lasting effect in the action setting. So all that made this trial sort of, uh, just something waiting to do, um, you know, bringing the best of surgical treatment and the best of uh, 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 EGFR treatment together for the best result. In the, the disease-free survival benefits seen at 81% in the stage two, three patients and 79% in the stage one, two, three patients um, by itself is enough for me to uh, be compelled to change practice. If I have a patient with an EGFR mutant disease, I'm going to want to use this drug. Now that's clinically important and it still needs to have regulatory and uh, approval and it still would need to be reimbursed as well. Um, I think that more data are going to be accumulated uh, in the next uh, six months or so, including sites of recurrence, which I would predict are going to show how meaningful it is for patients who have lung cancer and have resection not to have recurrence in delicate sites uh, like the brain, the, the lung, the bone, the pain and the morbidity that goes with that. And ultimately we're gonna want survival data uh, that's going to take several years. We showed an initial uh, survival um, curve at the ASCO meeting, only 5% mature. It's heading in the right direction, but it's way too early to discuss that. Um, but this trial will have to be followed for that ultimately. But it's my opinion that as we wait for that, we don't want patients to be denied the benefit of this, uh, if at all possible. So at least myself, I am a study principal investigator, but myself and um, you know, many of the community um, in the discussions following the ASCO, they discussed it at the meeting. Um, certainly my colleagues here at Yale Smaller Cancer Hospital, uh, we all feel very importantly that, that one should use this. To, to tell you how compelling it is, the, the Alchemist trial, which is another trial that's ongoing, looking at erlotinib in this setting, is being amended now to make sure that patients are informed of these data before they go on to that randomized trial, or erlotinib versus placebo. So I think uh, these are compelling data. Um, they're, they're not even close. Um, certainly, uh, we'll continue to file for all the other endpoints I, I mentioned, but it's a big step forward and it really shows very much like with breast cancer uh, 15 years ago, bringing Herceptin into the adjuvant setting after it was uh, shown to be useful in metastatic disease. And when you take the best drugs, take the best biology, the targeted uh, treatments earlier in disease, you can have even better uh, results and, and help patients earlier. And the hope would be cure these patients of their disease. We've always been able to cure patients in early lung cancer. Now, hopefully, we can cure more of them and prevent recurrence uh, to, to difficult to treat sites.